Amen. The first one was to God. Let's appreciate them. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen and amen. Y'all welcome to another segment. Another first Friday of the month of November. We thank the Lord for the grace he has given us giving you an eye to find the time to come and pray and hear the word. And every declaration by the Spirit of the Lord. And I know that this night shall not be like any other night. It shall be a night to remember, a night to give God glory in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord like to welcome all of you and those who are joining us on streaming. May God bless you as you join this service. It's a night of possibilities, the first Friday of the month, and we are now in November. Praise God. Tonight, we're going to be seeking the face of God for grace for completion. Hallelujah. How many of you have got something to complete this year before this year runs out? Amen. I've got. Hallelujah. And so tonight, the Lord will release a special grace in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In Isaiah 44, the word of the Lord says, Isaiah 44, verse 24, from verse 24, thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, and the one who formed you from the womb. I, the Lord, am the maker of all things, stretching out the heavens by myself, stretching out the heavens by myself, and spreading out the earth all alone, causing the omens of boasters to fail, making fools out of diviners, causing wise men to draw back and turning their knowledge into foolishness. And it says in verse 26, confirming the word of his servants and performing the purpose of his messengers. It is I who says Jerusalem, she shall be inhabited and all the cities of Judah, they shall be built and I will raise up her ruins again. It is I who says to the depth of the sea, be dried up, and I will make your rivers dry. It is I who says of Cyrus, he is my shepherd, and he will perform all my desire. Hallelujah. And he declares of Jerusalem, she will be built. And of the temple, your foundation will be laid. Praise the name of the Lord. So what the Lord has said surely comes to pass. What the Lord has stirred up in your heart as a desire shall surely come to pass. What the Lord stirs up that you shall do as a project, you shall surely complete. Hallelujah. He said every depth, he said he stretches out the heavens by himself, he spread out the earth all alone. And so, all things are within the mighty hand of God. And that which he has stirred up from your heart from the beginning of this year, you shall surely complete in the name of Jesus. No matter what may have taken place in the middle of the year or the end of the year, I mean, sorry, from the beginning of the year to the middle of the year, that may frighten you or, I mean, discourage you or makes your hope to be hopeless. I want to tell you, Tonight, we have come to let the Lord know that we still have faith in him. That our hope is still in him. Praise the name of the Lord. And so is the power of God, is the authority of God that is behind every inspired desire, inspired project, inspired dreams of the Lord. They surely come to completion. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you remember also in the book of Psalm 37, 
verse 4 to 5, the Lord also assures us here that he gives, he gives, verse 4, Psalm 37, verse 4, he says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in the Lord. And you are here tonight, you've come to delight yourself. You've, you've come, you know, to have the presence of the Lord. Because in the presence of the Lord, is a mountain melt like wax. So sometimes you see that, you know, what you want to accomplish this year or whatever your goal has been, there may be mountains before your goal. And as you are here before the Lord tonight, be ready to see those mountains be melted in the name of Jesus. Let your faith be alive. He said, delight yourself in the Lord. Serve him. He said, delight yourself. Love to be in his presence. The delight in, his, in the Lord. He says, and he will give you the desires of your heart. He said, commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him. And he will do it. He will do it. Praise God. He will do it. Let's look at John chapter 14. John, Gospel of John chapter 14. Tonight we are seeking the grace for completion. John chapter 14. There's a word there for you. Verse 14. It says, if you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. I will do it. He didn't put a date, but it says, I will do it. Praise the name of the Lord. If you love me, you will keep my commandments also. So, but most importantly, Jesus revealed himself to us that if you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. There's the assurance that he has given us. We cannot stop asking. He has given us the name as authority. He has given us the name as power. And so we have to call on him. We have to pray and call upon that name because God has given him that name that is above all names. Both on the earth, below the earth, and in heaven. And so that name is precious to us. Hallelujah. And so tonight, we're going to be sharing the word and praying for the grace for completion. For the grace for completion. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 9. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's hear the word. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Where's that word? I want to share something here. You know, it's, 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 you see, we need to understand here. And what shall we say there in verse 14? There's no injustice with God, is there? May it never be. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on him whom I have mercy. And I will have compassion on him on whom I have compassion. And verse 16 says to us, Romans chapter 9, he says, so then it does not depend on the man who wills or the man who runs, but on God. Say on God. But on God who has mercy. Say on God who has mercy on me. Who has mercy on my career. Who has mercy on my businesses? Who has mercy on my ministry? Hallelujah. So there is the grace of God for completion, for attainment, for accomplishment. Because also our Lord Jesus has come with grace and mercy. And so we're going to be looking the word receiving the grace of completion. You know, the Bible says in Psalm 90, 
He says, teach us to number our days that we may apply the heart of wisdom. And which is, which is wisdom in its own. In other words, you know, God has given us that, that grace to realize the number of our days and the things that we do. Also to be conscious of the time that we spend. And so you will see that this puts you in a sort of self-reflection. And we are in that time of the year where we start to take audit of the year. Where we start to reflect on the things we have done this year. All the things we are still doing and what we are yet to complete. And so it is for every individual. The goals we want to achieve. The goals we have not achieved. This is the reason for this sermon tonight and the prayer tonight. Hallelujah. It is the night of possibilities. Because what we have seen this year makes all things like our goals and our dreams or our, our project as if it's not going to be possible. But we know the Bible says to us that they that believe, they, they that believe, is that all things are possible to them. Those who believe in God, all things are possible to them. And so we cannot give in into what we have seen on earth. We cannot lose hope of what we have begun that we want to achieve this year. We cannot. I don't know what you have on your list. But I want to tell you tonight, it is still possible. It is still possible. Amen. So it is wisdom for us to assess our activity for the year. To assess our life. So whatever that is still not forthcoming, don't fall into regret. Don't fall into regret. Don't fall into depression. Hallelujah. Because as a believer who have challenged himself or herself, it's a sign that you are walking in dominion. It's a sign that you have a dominion mentality. So you are able to view what you are doing. You are able to see what you have not done. You are able to see what you have proposed to do this year or and you, you have not done anything. But I'm looking at what you have begun to do this year. What you still hope to achieve this year. I'm here to tell you tonight that it is not over yet. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because God has given us everything on earth to process. To process our life. Both naturally and supernaturally. So we are here tonight to seek the grace of God. That our lives shall not be a laughter this year. Our career shall not be a laughter. Our business ministry shall not be a laughter. Hallelujah. Proverbs 13 verse 12. It says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. It's a but desire fulfilled is a tree of life. Desire fulfilled is a tree of life. So I'm asking, what could be your desire from January this year? What could be your desire even as of June this year that you said this year I must attain this. This year I must achieve this. But you have seen yourself that you have not even completed you have not even seen the tip of it. You've begun it, but you have not seen the results. I want to tell you that we have 65 days to the end of this year. God can still surprise you. I say God can still surprise someone in the name of Jesus. So hope for tonight that there shall be a fresh grace. A fresh grace. The mercy of God. That shall be released upon you as power for completion by the presence of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. The book of Job, chapter 14, it says, chapter 14, verse 7. It said, Even a tree 
has small hope. Even a tree has small hope. If it is cut down, it will sprout again and grow new branches. He said it will sprout again and grow new branches. Hallelujah. That's not the that's that's tree. He said it has more hope even if it is cut down. When you, when you read it finished, it will tell you that as, even if the root is grown old, as far as the root is still planted and that at the scent of the water it shall bear fruit again. The scent tonight is the word of God. The scent, the water is the grace of God to rest upon you, to shower upon you, and you will bear the fruit of the seed you have planted from the beginning of this year. In the name of Jesus, you will see the reality of your dream this year in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It's important for us to understand this. It's never over. You are a child of God. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Praise God. So there is still more in you that you're thinking. There is still more in you. There's the strength in you. You are just like that tree which is still standing, planted. So at the scent of the word of God tonight, you will be a fruit in the name of Jesus. Now, as children of God, you know, naturally, our intellect is there. We express, you know, wishes, we express goals for the year. Sometimes they say new year, some say new year resolution. Yeah, it could be new year resolution. Because resolution has to do with where you want to please God. Revolu uh, resolution has to do with what you want to put away this year. But you are still hanging to it. You need the grace. You need the grace of God to completely put it aside. But I'm looking at you tonight and saying, what have you conceived naturally as a child of God? What has been your desire? Some of us, we want, you know, marriage breakthroughs. Some of us, we want maybe fruit of the womb. Some of us, we want miraculous jobs. We want to engage, for example, in capital projects. Those are natural, and it can be stirred up also by the Spirit of God because it is the plan that He had for you. But there has been some experience of unexpected events in your life that seems to truncate, that seems to put a stop or to nail that which has been your goal or that which has been your dream. But I want you to believe tonight that God is able to raise it up again. God is able to bring your dreams back again. God is able to stir up that desire in you again. God is able to complete the project which you have laid the foundation. Same this year. All we need is grace. A fresh grace. So that those barriers you have experienced will not hinder you. Also, there are drawing back spirit. There are drawing back spirit. There are certain spirit that surrounds you that you may not know that hinders your project, your goals, your wish for the year. You have to pray. Because Paul says, you know, give no advantage to the devil. For we are not ignorant of his devices. And that's why we pray. Praise the name of the Lord. All has been accomplished for us in our Lord Jesus Christ. But one thing that is given to us is that we must ask as well. We must pray. We must seek him. Even though it has been completed, it has been accomplished for us. But Paul says, give no advantage to the devil. For we are not ignorant of his devices. Devices used to to, to shut down your hope. Devices used to shut down the growth you expect in your life and career. And so we come tonight to pray. But we must have understanding 
so that our warfare can be appropriate or well appropriated. There are disappointments from people that you relied on to get you to a certain level, but you cannot make it. That's why Jesus says, if you do not worship me, he said, my father can raise a stone and they will become a worshiper. Praise the name of the Lord. And I'm praying tonight for you to complete what you have laid up for your life this year. God will raise new people. God will raise helpers for you in the name of Jesus. I preach during the week about this, about grace, the people of grace, women of grace, men of grace, strange people that exhibit grace in your life. They are to lead you to your fulfillment. So there are so many factors that hinders our natural desire as a child of God. There's nothing wrong for you to, to have ambition. But sometimes when they're not forthcoming, you can fall into anxiety. And also the rule of anxiety has been given to us. The antidote has been given to us that we must pray, we must supplicate, and we must give thanks unto the Lord. And it will give us peace that surpasses all understanding. And I pray that you receive understanding for the rest of this year to achieve your goals and to repossess your possessions in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Then we engage the supernatural just as we are here tonight. I know you pray in your homes, but we are here tonight on the supernatural side of our natural self. This is where we apply our faith in prayer. This is where we seek wisdom from above. You know, I've just said that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall be given to your heart. It comes with the wisdom for you to finish well. So we are gathered on the supernatural tonight to believe the word of promises of God you know, to, to, to reenact it, to react, to superimpose, to reinforce the word of God because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And that's on the supernatural side. Because the psalmist also says to us, he said, I will look unto this mountain. Where shall my help come from? He said, my help comes from the Lord God who does not sleep nor slumber. He said, the God of Israel who does not sleep nor slumber. And that's the supernatural side. You may have done your bit this year. Start to look unto the Lord. Start to hope unto the Lord. You have waited on man or men so much in the last 10 months. Now it's time to focus on God so that you can receive that which he has apportioned for you this year. Praise the name of the Lord. So we, 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 we're here for the supernatural so that we can access that, the portion that he has laid up for this year. He said he crowns the year with bounties. Psalm 65, verse 5. He said he crowns the year with bounty. But, but look at what verse, verse 5 says in that, in that first. He said, he says unto God, this is the revelation of the psalmist. He says unto God, you faithfully answer our prayers with awesome deeds. That is awesome deeds, awesome action, awesome miracles, signs and wonders. Hallelujah. He says, you faithfully answer our prayers with awesome deeds. Oh God, our Savior. He says, you are the hope of everyone on earth, even those who sail on distant seas. Praise the name of the Lord. This is our God. Is ever alive. Is ever faithful. The Bible says, faithful is he that has called you. 
He has promised, would he not fulfill it? And I want you to, to, to hold these words tonight as we go into prayers. And the Lord will surely meet you at the point of your need to have a good finish. In the name of Jesus. The Lord will meet you at the point of your need for that employment. He will meet you for your, at the point of your need for that your desire. Desire for your family. Desire for your children this year. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want us to rise to pray. I want us to rise to pray. Just rise up, let us pray tonight. Jehovah is your name. He said, you faithfully answer our prayers with awesome deeds. First of all, I want us to pray tonight to lift up your hope in prayers. Make your faith to come alive in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just give us some music. Praise the name of the Lord. Just begin to pray. Begin to pray right now. Roba Sundarabakus Kembronimos. Lebe Keskente. Lift up your hope in prayer. Lord, I'm here before you, Lord. You faithfully answer our prayers. I lift up my hope in you. In the name of Jesus. By your word of tonight. I make my faith to come alive. I make my faith to come alive by your word of tonight, O oh Lord. And in your presence, Almighty God, let your Holy Spirit release that spirit of faith tonight. Release that gift of faith in me tonight. Lord, I lift up my faith. Let your word stir up my faith tonight. The word that I've received tonight. Lord Almighty God, just pray, pray. Make my faith alive. Make my faith alive, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Tonight we have come to seek the grace for completion. Before we go deep into these prayers, I want us to, to point our hearts. Because the Bible says, without holiness, no man can see God. In other words, no man can experience Him. Romans chapter 6 says, what shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin so that grace may increase? May it never be. May it never be. Because he said, may it never be. How shall we who died to sin still live in it? What I'm trying to say tonight, our first prayer tonight, is there anything that may stand against the blessing of the Lord in our life. It has to be removed. It has to be removed. John chapter 1, Epistle of John chapter 1, verse 1, verse 9, he says to us, he said, if we confess our sins, he said, it's faithful. Because we're, we're praying for grace of completion. But we cannot remain in error of life and we want the grace to increase. So we cannot go in this prayer without clearing the path. That if we confess our sins, He is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Just begin to pray unto the Lord. Is there any error in your life? Father Lord, I pray, O Lord God. If there's any error standing between me and my blessing, between me and the grace of completion, in the name of Jesus, let them be wiped away by the blood of Jesus. Let that be a prayer. Is 
same error. Father Lord, I pray tonight. Let them be cleared off. Let them be cleared off. Reba Sontoria. Lambo Cross Kebroni. Debra Nema Cross Kebroni. Reke Tete. Ruma Keskeboria. Let them be cleared off, O Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. Let them be cleared off. Let them be cleared off. Any error in my life, any error that may stand between me and the growth that I desire this year, let the errors be removed by the blood of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Psalm 24, Psalm 24, verse 3. We must understand this, that God has so much for you. He has prepared so much for you. And you cannot allow anything to stand against your blessing. He has so much for you. Psalm 24, verse 3 says, Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? He said, Who? And who may stand in his holy place? Verse 4 says, He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Who has not lifted up his soul to first wood and has not sworn deceitfully. Verse 5 says, He shall receive a blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. He said, this is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. And we are here seeking him for a fresh grace upon our life to finish well this year. To give divine testimonies to give him praise for his awesome deeds in our life this year. To strengthen our hand. Pray tonight. Lord, forgive me of any error. Forgive me of any sin. By the blood of Jesus, that which you have detailed, apportioned as a progress, as a growth, as a blessing in this year. As a take possession of them. Repent of any other errors, any disobedience. God is about to bring restoration. But you must remove errors from your ways. Pray and ask for forgiveness by the blood of Jesus. He has paid the price. He has paid the price. But you need to confess it. Because no one can say he has no sin. He makes it a liar. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, mighty God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Therefore, you pray tonight, oh Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for removing every judgment away from my life. Tonight, I stand in, in that presence, in newness of life. I humble myself under your blood of Jesus tonight. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you for making me, O Lord, to ascend the hill of your blessing. The empowerment from heaven for the rest of this year. And all that I lay my hands to do, all that I began with my hand, shall surely prosper. Now, let that be a prayer for me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
all that you have made your hands to do, all where you have begun as a project. Hey, Father, we pray, mighty God, tonight. You are the mighty miracle worker. Lord of mighty God, thank you for making a way. Thank you for your grace, fresh grace upon our lives. Thank you, Lord God, for forgiveness of sin. And now, Lord God, we step into your awesome works. We step into your blessing. Father, Lord, I thank you, mighty God. Glorify your name, O Lord God. We spend our days and worship you. Thank you for receiving me, O Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for seeing the blood of Jesus. Not all my fault anymore. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. For better is he that is in me than he that is in the world. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we want to pray tonight according to your word. Your word says in Isaiah 48, verse 17. He said, You are our Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. He said, I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit, who leads you in the way you should go. Pray tonight, Lord, lead me in the way I should go. Teach me to profit in that which I have begun. Teach me to profit. Lead me in the way I should go. In the name of Jesus, the Lord shall give you divine direction. The Lord shall give you divine idea for divine profit that you will not be a loser this year in the name of Jesus pray tonight in the name of Jesus Lord I pray mighty God you are the redeemer of Israel Father Lord God I pray teach me to profit in that which I have begun ask God to teach you to profit ask God to teach you to profit ask God to lead you in the way you should go so that you will not stumble anymore, so that you will not make a loss anymore, so that you will not miss your blessing anymore. In the name of Jesus, the way to profit, the Lord will lead you to the right people. The Lord will lead you to the right people. In the name of Jesus, He will lead you to where you will prosper. He will lead you to where that you should go. Pray, pray, pray tonight. In the Lord of Lord, the King of Kings, you will no longer stumble. The Lord will lead you. The Lord will teach you the prophet. You will complete that which you have begun. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will teach you financial wisdom. He will teach you financial wisdom. He will grant you the wisdom to stay above and not beneath. He said, only you shall be above and not beneath. He said, you will be the head and not the tail. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, Lord, teach me to profit. Let that be your word. Teach me to profit. Teach me to profit. Teach me to profit. Lead me the way I should go. That I will not be a loser this year. That I will complete that which I have begun. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Hear what the word of the Lord said to his servant in Zechariah chapter 4. And it says, verse 6, it said this, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. He said, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. And the same word is coming to you today in the name of Jesus. I said, the same word is coming to you today in the name of Jesus. He says, not by might, nor by power. In other words, it says, not by your power, nor by your might, or by the connection that you have. Not by those whom you have relied upon. It's 
says, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. Your completion this year shall be by the spirit of the Lord. Your attainment for the rest of this year shall be by the spirit of the Lord. Your breakthrough in your career this year shall be by the spirit of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, I declare the breakthrough in your business shall be by the Spirit of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, we are men as failed you. God will pick you up. God will pick you up. In the name of Jesus. And it says in verse 7, He said, What are you, O great mountain? before Zerubbabel. He says, you will be made a plain. He said, you will be made a plain. What has been those mountains before you? They shall become a plain. In the name of Jesus. He said unto him, he said, I will make every crooked way perfect. I will make them smooth. And therefore, you will not get to the end of this year it shall be smooth for you. You will get to the end of this year smoothly. Every crooked way you have seen from the beginning of this year shall become plain. They shall become smooth. You will achieve what you desire to achieve. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, he said they shall become a plain. He said, what are you, O great mountain? And he says unto him, he said, he will bring forth the top stone with a shout of grace. Grace. Grace to it. And therefore, Lord, tonight, every of our endeavor, every of our effort, every of our project, every of our job seeking, every of our business wish, every of our family wish, we shout grace. Grace upon it. Grace upon it. Grace upon it. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. What a wonderful God. What a wonderful God. I'm saying to someone today, you may be watching, but there are some things you have been doing in your strength. There are some things you have been doing in your might and the power that you rely on and it does not work. But God says, accept a spirit. And it shall work this year by the Spirit of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Jehovah Nisi. It's a day that are led by the Spirit of the Lord. Said, these are the sons of God. Said, these are the sons of God. And I believe the Lord will lead you to where favor is waiting for you. I said, the Lord will lead you to where favor is waiting for you. Listen, people. Ruth was a woman who came from Moab with Naomi. And she decided to go and look for work. And the Spirit of the Lord led her to the farmland that belonged to the richest man in the city. It can only be by the Spirit of the Lord. And I'm saying, this Spirit of the Lord will lead you to where you will prosper, to where you will find financial favor to complete your project in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus therefore declare tonight I am led by the spirit of the Lord for to the rest of this year to next year I'm led by the spirit of the Lord I'm led by the spirit of the Lord I'm led by the spirit of the Lord in the name of Jesus I will no longer stumble I will not walk in defeat I will not walk in emptiness I'm led by the spirit of the Lord I'm led by the Spirit of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, We bring for the top stone and with shout of grace and grace. And verse 8 of the same Zechariah chapter 4 says to us, He said, Also the word of the Lord came to me, saying, And the word is coming to me. The scripture is coming to me tonight and I'm saying it to you. Praise the name of the Lord. He said, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house and his hands will finish it. Then you will know 
that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. He said, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. If you know the story of that, of that project, the same word is coming to us. That, that our hands have started certain things this year. In fact, our hands have written projects. Our hands have written proposals. Our hands have written your CV. You have laid the foundation for what you want God to do in your life. It may not be a building. It may be a conceived idea. It may be a conceived innovation. But God is saying, you will surely finish it. It shall surely come to pass. People of God, you must understand the spirit that dwells within you. You must understand it's not, God has not given you a spirit of, of timidity. He has given you a spirit of power and love and a sound mind. Don't fall into regrets. You may have invested money. You may have invested time. God has a way to redeem your time. He has a way to redeem that which you thought it's lost. He said, I will teach you to make profit and I will lead you the way that you should go. So we are praying tonight that the Lord of the Lord will surely release a fresh grace upon us to complete that which we have laid the foundation in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. On this first prayer, Jesus says to us in John chapter 14, verse 12. He said, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to the Father. Now I want you to believe tonight there are still greater works for you to complete in this year 2020. And you shall surely do it. There are greater works waiting for you. You shall surely do it. Either in your career, either in the ministry work, you shall surely do it. In the name of Jesus, you must believe you must believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's our pillar. That's our pillar. You must believe. Don't say, oh, it's November. It's like this year is gone. What else can I do? There is so much that you still do. There is so much that is, you can still do. And it says, greater works than this you will do if you believe. If you believe. So there are greater works that is still remaining for this year to accomplish. If you look at Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 explains to us again that we are created, we are God's workmanship. Created for good works. He said, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. He said, we are created for good works, which God prepared before him, so that we will walk in them. There are greater works waiting for you. Hallelujah. That will give God glory. Hallelujah. So don't look at this year that is finished. God has not finished with you. He said, Greater works shall you do who believe. Praise the name of the Lord. I know so many people this year who have lost job. And my prayer for you tonight. 
that you have been created. You are God's workmanship. You are created in Christ Jesus. Anywhere that you are, I declare upon your life tonight that there are works waiting for you. You will walk into them. I said you will walk into them. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jehovah Lord God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let's give Jesus a clap offering. Take your seat. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Lord is faithful. First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9. We believe in God for grace of completion. That's our prayer tonight. It's a night of possibilities. Paul already said to us, we should not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. But look at 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians rather, chapter 16. Now, Paul, a man of ministry, a man of target, a man with the mantle of the gospel, a called apostle, it gave us an insight here. And he began to pray, or in his last letter here, from verse 5, he said, but I will come to you after I go through Macedonia. For I am going through Macedonia, and perhaps I will stay with you or even spend the winter, so that you may send me you may send me on my way wherever I may go. Verse 7, for I do not wish to see you now just in passing. For I hope to remain with you for some time, if the Lord permits. But I will remain in Ephesus until Pentecost. Because verse 9 is for a wide door for effective service has opened to me and there are many oppositions there are many opposers he said there are open doors to him for ministry works which is his goal for the gospel and he showed us here he said there are many adversaries. Adversaries are opposers. And so he decided to tarry. There are many adversaries. A wide open door. Doors of opportunity is open to us for effective life, effective career. Opportunities are there but there are opposers. There are adversaries. We can't rule it out. And once you sense this, that's what I said earlier, of negative spirits. I said earlier, there are spirits that hinders your goals, your dreams, opposing spirit the same experience Apostle Paul experienced here and he decided to tarry to pray and we are here tonight to pray against all kinds of opposition the drawback spirit or drawing back spirit from what you have desired to achieve and what you have desired to see in your life in this year. God can still give you the liberty, the freedom, the breakthrough, the completion in this same year, in this same tonight. 
you have to acknowledge. Especially when you are in the midst of, oppos- of, of opposition, you can't get certain things done. If you are in the midst of opposing spirit or a drawback spirit, you cannot do anything much. You can't have something things completed because they are drawing back spirit. It can be your vision. The vision can be frustrated or be clouded with frustration. You may not be able to complete certain things until you fight. You put up the fight in the spirit realm, in the supernatural. You engage the supernatural. Praise the name of the Lord. Ephesians says, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. It says to us, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. It's a part against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. There are wicked people that will not that don't want what you are doing to progress. They don't want your life to progress. So when you are looking for grace of completion, there are, there are prayers you have to pray so that the grace can manifest because the grace has been given over 2,000 years ago. So we must be aware of those oppositions that will rise at the very point when God is about to use you. Let's, let's go a bit deep. Go with me to ne- Nehemiah. Nehemiah, a servant of God, without a title, who served in the court. Hallelujah. We saw his experience. The Bible says in, in Nehemiah chapter 1, he said the word, the words of Nehemiah, the sons of Ecclesia. Now it happened in the month just left in the 28th year while I was in Susa, the capital, that Anani, one of the brothers and some men from Judah came. And I asked them concerning the Jews who had escaped and had survived the captivity and about Jerusalem. They said to me, the remnant there in the province who survived the captivity are in great distress, reproach, and the wall of Jerusalem is broken down, and its gates are burnt with fire. That's the city of God. And it became an inspiration in him by the Spirit of God that he had to when he heard this word, he broke down. He wept and mourned for days in prayer and in fasting. And then it became a great concern in him. And the good thing was, the king saw him, he gave him a passage to go and do the repairs. And as we know the story, he has been given the passage, he has been given the open door. He rose to it. And the Bible told us about certain people who rose against him. Those are the spirits within him, around him. Until you begin a good thing that you see the enemy rise against you. And you have begun a good thing this year. You have laid up a good venture. You, you have come up with a good project. You have come up with a good idea. You have come up, you know, to rebuild your life and the family. 
They know every move we are making, but the wrong spirit will make attempt to draw you back. But if it's of the Lord, they shall surely fail. So there are oppositions around Nehemiah who didn't want him to succeed. They said Sambalat and Tobias. These men were opinion leaders. Whatever they say stands. There are people in your family that whatever they say stands and stand against you. So we must be cautious of this. We are saying, Lord, we want the grace of completion. But we cannot be ignorant of the wrong spirit. We cannot be ignorant of the wrong spirit. And tonight, the Lord shall give you a breakthrough over them. In the name of Jesus, those who convince people not to help you, the Lord will raise first fresh helpers for you. In the name of Jesus, we are praying tonight to raise the vengeance of God. It's enough with the wrong spirit. So this man, the story came now, he completed this project, the Bible says, in, 50, in 52 days. They say all kinds of things to run him down. When they heard in chapter 4 of Nehemiah, he said, when they heard that they were going to rebuild the wall, they became furious, very angry, and they mocked the Jews. They mocked the Jews. So many people mocked you as a child of God when you are about a good thing. They mock you. They mock you to depress you so that you don't achieve what the Lord has laid up in your heart. They mocked Nehemiah but he did not give in to them. He did not give in to them. They described them with all kinds of words and it's still happening today. They describe even some will describe your church. You say your church is not growing. They are, they are Sambalat and Tobias. But the Lord will close their mouth. And he has already closed some mouths. I said it before early this year. This is the twelfth year of the ministry. It's very, very dangerous. Praise the name of the Lord. And so it is that you must know what you are doing. You must pray continually. And look unto the Lord. The offer and finisher of our faith. So they say all kinds of things. They say, oh, it's running a small business. They say all kinds of things. What is the job you are doing? They don't record with you. Even when you mention you are looking for a new job, you have invited more trouble. They can say all kinds of things. So when you are trying to have a complete testimony, you must be aware of those who have the spirit of Sambalat, the spirit of Tobias. And you can have to put them on the prayers in the name of Jesus. And so we're going to pray against them tonight. That every spirit of Tobias or Sambalat around you, around your vision, around your project, we suppress them tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. They raised false prophecy. It happened in the days of Nehemiah. But the Lord will make them and their homens to be ridiculed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus says to us, every path we're going to follow, he has given us power. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. He said, he has, Behold, I give unto you power. Amen. The power, the authority is in our mouth to clear away all the stumbling blocks, to render useless every drawing back spirit around us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So as we're about to finish around this tonight, before we pray again, we need to see certain situations which remains in permanent stagnation with spiritual highs. So you can, we, we, so you, you can pray appropriately in your spiritual warfare. 
I don't know what is in your life that looks as if it's stagnated. I don't know what it is that is like a permanent stagnation. I pray tonight the Lord will break it loose. In the name of Jesus, whatever stands as a permanent situation that is like a permanent stagnation shall be broken loose tonight. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So we must look at it with the eyes of, of the spiritual eyes. We must look at it. I don't know what has been standing as if it's not moving forward. That it has been your desire that God, let me see progress in this place. Let me see growth in this place. Let me see advancement in this place. In my personal life, either even in your married life, either in your, in your marriage or in your family, you need to pray and that stagnation shall be broken. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because our hope is in the Lord. And he fights our fights. And so tonight as we're going to pray, as we're running to close, I want us to rise tonight. Is there any place, is there any aspect of your life that has been or remain in permanent stagnation. Ask the Lord to break them loose tonight in the name of Jesus. Let's rise up to